What had you done specifically, do you think, to elicit this misogynist and profane and disgusting and uncivil response from him? And Um, threatening. Yeah. Um, I did nothing. I said nothing. I I, I did nothing. I just happened to be sitting there. Um, And I think I was... um, the, the brunt of his anger. Had you had you had any other previous interaction with this unhinged, clearly a uh, borderline psychotic man before? You know, the sad part of this is that I've known him for years. Our districts touch each other. I'm a freshman. I was just. I wouldn't use the word November. touch with him, given his <laughs> <Sorry>. background. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't use that word touch, given his background, right. uh, Congresswoman. So, so you you had known him, and there was no se- sense that he could be driven to this level of 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 threat and right. threatening discourse and before? Not previously. I'll tell you, though, at the moment, I mean, did I feel like he was threatening my life? Not necessarily. But was I intimidated? You bet I was. And after that happened, I just wanted out of that chamber. And really, our chamber deserves more respect from that, or than that. And you just had the president on talking about civility. The Democrats are screaming that we need to be civil toward each other, yet the Democrats, at least in our chamber, haven't uh, shown that example at all. They've been throwing fits on a regular basis, looking like a group of toddlers throwing a temper tantrum. Uh, Really, our our chamber deserves more respect than that. And when we start addressing this massive budget bill that we're going to be looking at today, that uh, Governor Walker is presenting to us today, we need to fix this very quick because we are going to be cutting you know, so many programs across the state, everyone is going to be affected. And uh, we need to make sure that we can discuss this civility or civilly. Let me tell you, you know what I think I want to do, Congresswoman Litchens? I want to, I, I got to come over. I got to come over to um, Wisconsin and hang out with you because uh, someone like this Gordon Hintz, I would love if he tried to say something like that to me. Oh, I, I, say, I say, Congressman, I don't know, Congresswoman, you're, you know, you're, you're not, you're not a big woman. You're kind of a, you know, smaller, smaller right. woman. Uh, see, I have three older brothers. You know that ki- that kind of confrontation. I th- I actually relish that having that kind of confrontation where someone like Gordon hints, who apparently doesn't have a hint of what it means to be a gentleman. Um, Congresswoman, I want to play for you a soundbite. This is President Obama yesterday about the way we as a country need to treat public employee unions. This was after the initial reports of that confrontation you had with Congressman Hintz. Let's listen. I don't think it does anybody any good when public employees are denigrated or vilified or their rights are infringed upon. So who's being vilified here? Is it the Republicans who are actually doing their job in Wisconsin or is it the public employee unions who are just being asked to, to contribute a little bit more? You know what's fascinating about that comment is that our federal employees are not allowed to bargain on wages, benefits or their pension. And yet he has the audacity to reference what we are doing here in Wisconsin, where we are just trying to do the same thing that has happened to our federal employees here in Wisconsin. And it's it's unbelievable. We have a budget crisis going on in our state, and we need every tool at our disposal, you know, to give to our local government so they can balance our budget. He has no idea what's going on in our state right now. Well, uh, apparently he's apologized. He issued kind of a well, it seemed like kind of a throwaway apology line. This doesn't and count to me. He apologized on Monday. It certainly would have been nice if he would have called me on Friday or even maybe Saturday. Uh, he called me Monday after this had already made it into the news. So he said, I apologize Monday when I learned my comments may have been taken personally by someone. That's exactly right. And again, this is just so disappointing. Um, Our body should be a respected body. You should walk into those chambers and feel like you're safe, and you shouldn't feel like you're threatened at all. You know what I think of? I think about also, Congresswoman, is that you're you're a pretty cool character. I mean, you didn't even run around trying to whip up a media frenzy about this. I mean, the rest of us can the rest of us can do that for you. (laughs) But you weren't running around sending out blast emails about this. A couple of your colleagues overheard this, right? Yeah, they did. And um, yeah, I really was not going public with this at all. Um, I did want to see him disciplined by his leadership, so I did call my leadership on Friday and ask them to do something about this. But um, I really, I would have preferred this to stay quiet, but uh, it is what it is now. Yeah, well, you know what I say is, uh, Congresswoman, we 
we're there for you, and we're certainly there for anyone. I mean, Democrat or Republican who actually shows up to do his or her job. And we might have disagreements, and, and we all do about various issues, but you know, it's 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 time to end the, uh, you know, the this this chasing game where you're trying to chase people around out of state and they're hiding in hotels, and it's embarrassing at some point. And Scott Walker is going to announce today the full details, of course, of his budget plan. And I think the people are you know willing to you know really give him a give him a listen and see what he has to say and and try to save the state. That's the bottom line. Everybody should want to save the state, not just save their little uh, union perches. That's why he was elected, and that's exactly why we were elected last fall. We are sent here to balance the budget honestly for the first time in almost 20 years. So it has to be done. Congresswoman, what does the uh, state house smell like right now? Oh, my gosh. It's a joke. We talk about carrying around bottles of Febreze. It's disgusting. And for such a beautiful building to be abused so much is really a sad thing. <laughs> I mean, actually, we, I have some of that really lovely <laughs> organic orange peel spray. I'm going to send it over to your office. I'm, I'll we send it to FedEx. It. <laughs> yeah, it's great. It's actually, it's all organic. It doesn't has any bad chemicals. And when the sort of the unwashed protesters who've been sleeping there and using the restrooms in there and pl- plugging up the toilets, you can just spray a little of that orange peel. And maybe it'll put them in a better mood, too. So we'll that make would be sure wonderful. To get, yeah, we'll make sure to get that over <laughs> to you. Hey, don't ever be intimidated by a bully, okay? Bullies, the second second you prick a bully, he usually starts crying. So uh, I, I just I just looked at him and said, well, Gordon, I know it's hard for you, but you usually, you usually pay for these services, don't you? <laughs> All right. Congresswoman Litchens. <laughs> Congresswoman Thank Litchens, you. it's a pleasure to have you on. You're a real lady and it's, uh, it's, it's delightful. Keep up the great work and we'll be following it. Will do. All right. You take care. Congresswoman Michelle Lidgens, that Gordon Hans. Let's call his office up, man. See if he can join us in a moment of civility on the air. Oh, why don't you pick on someone your own size, Gordon? With a name like Gordon, though, what do you know? I'm just saying. All right. We're going to take a break. A lot more to get to on the Laura Ingram show. How will this all be resolved? Well, in my mind, the American people are a lot smarter than the union hefties and all their supporters are combined. Don't go away. The Laura Ingram show.